Yo, yo, it's Perry. Hey, I am now here on a kind of windy day. I'm on my range. So, getting ready for tack. Targets are right there. And that direction, I can shoot out to 90. I'm on a ridge that would be very similar to um, elk country or something where you might want to shoot an arrow far and it's blowing today. And I've always wondered how variable is the wind over say 60 yards if it's blowing, I don't know, 15 miles an hour and off and on. And I'm gonna find out, I got a flag to show you guys. So hang on. All right, you can't really tell how downhill this is, but it is severely downhill. So there are benches all along here that would replicate a great place for an animal to be living. And there's a creek down there and there's a big water hole down there. So it's a known place, there's a deer trail right here. And they're all over the place where they come and they go over the ridge. And on that side, it's sloped flatter. And that's the southern side and this is the northern side. So more than likely today, the wind's out of the north. The animals would be on a bench right there and you'd be shooting into a, feels like a 10 or a 15 mile an hour headwind. If this was to simulate, uh, say elk or deer hunting. Whitetails too, but most of this is kind of a Western thing. I want to talk about long range and the wind. I'm up on the ridge where you might catch an animal, you know, crossing and it's relatively flat. This isn't a very big spot. This is probably a 15 acre flat and then it's a big domed spot. Big drop off here, more sloping that direction. But this might be where you'd catch them crossing to go to feed or water. All right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the uh, camera on the target, which is back there. And I'm gonna walk 70, 80 yards. And let's see what the flag does uh, across that distance. Okay, you're gonna be able to hear the wind gust because I have the microphone on that side of the video camera. And I'm just gonna walk real slow and see what the flag does over distance. And right about there is 70 or so. So I'm gonna walk as far as I can. All right, I said I wasn't gonna shoot, but I shot. <laughs> this is 92 yards. I'm gonna cut some brush and get back to 100. Target's out there, something cool happened. So this particular spot right here is kind of narrow. And this area over here is pretty flat. Like the ridge I showed you earlier is up there where it really drops off. So you can see it's kind of flat over here. So I'm, as I'm walking forward, the ridge curves right there, and then all of a sudden it really gets steep right here. And the wind's blowing uphill. I've been on a straight line, so it was flat back there. And then it's really downhill right here. And I went up to 30 yards, and the wind in this narrow spot is way worse than back there in the thick trees where it's flat, which is, duh, Troy, you idiot. But that's one of those atmospheric things I was talking about. If you, I, I knew that, I could feel it back there, that it wasn't that windy back there. And then at 30, literally my bow was blowing all over the place. Two things, the bow was blowing all over the place. I'll show you my horrible group because I got a gust of wind right at, before I released. That sucked. And then at 90, my uh, arrow, which is 568 grains, and about 18% FOC is weather cocked a little bit, which is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to fly, point into the wind and stay on track. So hang on. All right, it got really windy there for a second. These are at 30. This is the one I was pretty steady and then a gust of wind and I really literally released. And that would have been a 
you know, big change for a, uh, if I was a hunting shot. And it was just because the wind, because I did over here is fine, right? And then you check it out this way. And you can, this is the 90 yard arrow, okay? Didn't miss by a whole lot. But it's a little weather cocked. That is the way it is supposed to fly. The point stays on the shot line and the feathers kind of track behind it. And it's a little bit weather cocked, but that is ideal aero flight for higher forward of center. And from 90 yards, I mean, that's <laughs> on target. And I didn't adjust for the wind. I'm gonna play with this some more, but these two, that puff of wind was pretty significant. That's disturbing. And as we all know, I'm the worst shot on the internet. So all you guys who are better than I am can just make fun of me and make comments below. That's fine. Because I suck at shooting a bow. All right, we're back to one of my famous, you should have done this in the field things. I'm sorry about the gum chewing earlier. That was ridiculous. But I can't go back out on a windy day and repeat that. So we'll try to get past that. Um, show that the arrow that I shot at 92 yards is weather cocked a little bit, which means the target faces like this and the arrows entering a little bit with a fletching to the side. With higher FOC arrows, the arrow tends to fly. The point is staying on the shot line and the, and the feathers tend to weather cock a little bit. This is just an aerodynamic principle from a from a projectile that's got a heavier point and the center of gravity is forward. If you shoot a 400 grain arrow or 700 grain arrow, the premise of this whole video is you should go out in the wind and shoot as far as you humanly can. So I need to cut some brush to get back to 100 just for fun, for attack. But what I observed was what NASA talks about and the aerodynamics folks, that that is a natural occurrence from that type of shaft and the more forward to center you have, the more it'll just stay on line. The point stays on the shot line and the thing tends to weathercock and fly a little sideways. For those of you that say, well, follow your, your Mr. Captain Penetration and Arrow Flight. That arrow ain't gonna penetrate for crap. Uh, well, absolutely, yeah, it's one of the trade-offs. So Thomas Sowell, he's relatively smart. He says, there's no solutions, there's only trade-offs. One of the trade-offs here is that arrow in that wind, you saw me with the flag flying through all those different, uh, you know, the way the wind was blowing through the trees and all that stuff stayed on target at 90 yards and I missed by that much high. The trade-off is it's going to be a little weather cocked. Whatever your arrow platform, I've said this a couple of times, but I've not said this clearly, get your lazy ass out in the field and shoot in terrible conditions. I don't care what the arrow platform is. And find out what it does. If the one thing that would concern me is if you get arrows that are, let's say you shoot 85 yards and arrows are like all over the place. I would prefer that they would be all doing the same thing. That means that they are aerodynamically stable in the air. But if your arrows hit the target and they're not all weather cocked like mine was. I've shot them a bunch. I didn't show 15 of them, but they all passed about 50. You start to see that, that tilt a little bit, that weather cocking. Just go out in the field, take your platform, get in the worst conditions you can. So I was shooting in a 15, gust into 20, top of a hill, crosswind. There couldn't be anything worse. Um, but my arrows tend to stay on the shot line that I aim at. If your arrows blow like a bullet when you're shooting them far, and you know, everybody, you can adjust the scope to pull the dope. So if you're shooting a left to right wind, you might pull the dope over into the wind and let the bullet slide in because you're shooting pretty far. If your arrows drift, you need to know about the drift or at long range in the wind, you're not going to have an accurate impact point on your target animal. And that could make things for a much longer day. So once again, 
before you start saying, hey man, the thing ain't gonna penetrate because it's hitting sideways and you're the guy that says shoot straight. What that told me was at 90 yards, I probably shouldn't shoot in a hard crosswind because the arrow's not gonna hit straight and I should go to the target, which I'm gonna do next time it's blowing hard. And I'm gonna walk back to a certain distance just so I know. And when I start to see the weathercock, I'm probably gonna say, okay, in a strong wind, I probably need to stay inside of distance X. I currently think that's about 50 yards, but I don't know. This is the kind of stupid stuff. This is why Troy doesn't get nice toys because he asks questions like this, but I want to be as lethal as possible. So the arrow's got to be on target. I'm not having any trouble with that except for my 30 yard. <laughs> Literally, I was like this. And when I shot, I mean, my bow was blown in that one spot. The ridge got real narrow there and my bow was moving around. When I shot, I was like, oh, that's terrible, man. If I was hunting, that'd be horrible. So I need to work on shooting in the wind. Something for me to do. And then try to find that distance where my arrows are still hitting pretty much knock following the point. And then beyond that, a crosswind, you might have to consider whether you're worried about that penetration, you know, with the shaft going in a little weathercock. It's just a aerodynamic principle. All right, back to the video. The point here is the variability of that flag across distance and how it would impact your arrow flight. In windy conditions, I would just say get way closer. 60 is probably really tough. Not to mention the bow itself getting blown around. We've all experienced that. But as the arrow travels over that distance, all those undulations you see in the flag, your, sh your shaft is going through that. And it can just get a cattywampus is what I usually try to say. I don't know how to solve this other than practice in a lot of wind um, and learn where your arrows group in a windy situation as opposed to just indoors or in a really nice situation. I've played a lot of golf and at one time I was in single digit handicap and I played the ball down and put it out like a man. And you read Ben Hogan's writings and Ben Hogan always said, practice in the worst conditions, in high winds and in headwinds and crosswinds. So you need to check yourself on the, what the atmospheric conditions are doing to your projectile in golf. And I would suggest you do the same thing with an arrow. This is just an, something I've been wanting to do, waiting for a windy day. I would hunt today. It's not that windy, it's not 40, right? It's gusty to 20, 25, and then there's calm periods. But if you're elk hunting, and you're on this ridge I'm on, and you're 55 yards away and that elk is crossing that gap right there, you're gonna wait for the puff? You're probably shooting. And I'm okay with that. I'm just saying, if you watch what that flag did, it went real taut sideways. A couple of times it sagged completely limp, and then it would snap up. It blew all directions, well, it didn't blow, let me think. It didn't blow to my passenger side. It primarily blew, we got north winds today, so it primarily blew to the passenger side, or driver's side on me, right? But it did also, it did point back at the target. It did sag completely limp for just short periods. And what that means is your arrow is flying through this extremely variable wind tunnel. <laughs> There's no consistency to it at all. Again, I just wanted to see this done with something other than an arrow. And I mean, I kind of knew it like you feel it, but you don't feel it over distance. So your arrow is gonna fly, right? If I'm shooting back there, 55, 60, 70 yards, your arrow's flying through a crosswind and it's variable all the way down range. So that arrow is gonna be tracking a little funky and it, it's just up to you, however you wanna handle that. I would practice in the wind. A headwind is probably the best wind. A crosswind is probably the worst. As you saw here, the wind is blowing predominantly this direction, that way, okay? And that arrow is gonna come in here, but it's gonna go through those undulations in the wind. And that's gonna, it's gonna go like this and move around a little bit. And then when I got all the way out there, and that's at about 
I was at 85 or 90 when I stopped. The flag blew towards the target. That little gap there. So if you're in there, it's gonna launch with a tailwind if the flag's right, right? And every time I walked this, it would be different. There's no consistency to this. And then it would fly all the way down range through all those, some spots it, the flag was tight, some spots the flag was just kind of going like this. And a couple of times it was almost laying down. It didn't stay down for long, but you have a long projectile flying through the wind. And I really do think the only thing you'd, you'd want to do is with broadheads, get out here and shoot in some pretty significant crosswinds, headwinds. You wouldn't be shooting downwind at an animal. That doesn't make any sense. So, and then find out what you really, your lethal range is if the wind's blowing 15 or 20. So in, in calm conditions, you may be able to shoot 75 or 80 if you want to do that and shoot at animals. I don't advocate for that at all. I'm a 40 yard and under guy. But if you're a longer range shooter and that's your thing, that's fine. But you ought to get out in some windy conditions and find out if you're as lethal at 80 in the wind or should you bring that in and just check yourself say okay in calm conditions i'm good shooting 80 85 but if it's blowing 15 20 i really need to suck that distance in and the only way to find that out is to shoot and see what your groups look like and if they really open up at distance because of the atmosphere and your arrow kind of wobbling around a little bit which is going to happen it's a long projectile then you need to just check that. You can do whatever you want. If you want to shoot 85 and a 25 mile an hour crosswind, that's your decision and I'm okay with that. But it might be practical to just say, wow. I mean, just because of the conditions, I got good aero flight, I got a good release. And as it goes through these crazy changes in the wind, it just wanders around and maybe make a more responsible decision. Like I said, it's up to you. And I really do think it's a great practice thing. If you shoot 400 grains or 700 grains, I really do think this is a great practice conditions. And Ben Hogan was a pretty good golfer. So take Ben Hogan's advice. Practice in the worst conditions, not the best conditions, and then you'll be better and you'll know what the variables are. See ya. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm supposed to say, hey, subscribe, follow me on Instagram and all that stuff. Hey, it's a free country. If you want to do that, you do it. If you don't, don't. I'm okay with that. Okay, now we're, we're done. Bye. Your lazy ass out in the field and shoot in terrible conditions. I don't care what the aero platform is and find out what it does.